<laughs> Welcome back to the farm everybody. It is super windy today So hopefully you can hear me. All right. We have a lot of stuff to catch up on with these bees and I'm getting stuff blown in my eyes. It's so windy So let's walk out here to the bee yard and uh, hopefully the mic noise isn't too bad We have had so much going on with the bees if you guys seen the last video when I was out there with the goats and then all of a sudden the swarm started swarm, swarming up. Uh, we caught that swarm that night. They all went in the box. And I think I quit filming so I didn't show us actually moving them. But I left them out there that night until dark. And then as soon as I went back out there at dark time, there was no bees on the box at all. They had all marched in there just like I had uh, wanted. So there's that. All right, so the second thing is one of the most asked questions we get is what about the swarm or the hive from your parents house so i'll try to put some uh, video footage up if i can remember of that right here you guys can see so they can come out but supposedly they're not able to get back in and they still have plenty of room to where they can drag out their dead drones and stuff like that. But as you can see, they're starting to congregate more now around here because there's no way they can get in. I've got it all sealed off. And uh, right there is the uh, nook box. And you can see there's some already going in and out of there. So that's a good So there you go. You've seen that swarm that uh, we had over at my parents that was in the, the uh, hollow tree. We finally got them trapped out. And we moved them over here to our bee apiary and uh, what I did is I combined two hives. I had uh, one of the, the original swarms that left one of our beehives that I caught on the ground. Well I had it set and it was, it was doing good in the deep box and all that. So what I did is I took a piece of newspaper and put on top of that box and just poked a couple little holes in it. And then I took another deep box and put on top. And then I dumped in the uh, swarm from my parents' house, or from the, the hive from my parents' house. Dumped it in the top box, and then put the lid on it. And what that does is, it allows the bees a few days to actually kind of smell each other and get each other's scents. Because if I was just to bring that bee box home with the new bees and dump them in that, the, the existing hive here at our farm, they would actually fight and kill each other. So by putting that newspaper down just poking a few little holes with a knife or something in it that allows those scents and stuff to get mixed in and by a couple days the bees actually eat their way through and they go down or the bees from the bottom box go up and they kind of intermingle and they're used to each other's scents by then so they actually become one hive so going in the winter that was you know my goal is try to make these hives as strong as possible but I've also got a couple other things I want to talk about uh, we caught the uh, we went, we got the phone call and we went down by the lake and caught that wild swarm. It is actually in a box by itself and I'm going to show you guys. If I can walk over here without them getting mad. I was just working with them the other day and, uh, or actually yesterday I, I took a uh, frame of honey from them and the ones in that orange box, they get super mad and they actually start chasing me. Um, so you can see over here we got a feeder on. We got a lot of new stuff going on here and I'm afraid I'm going to get stung but so I got a feeder on here and what this is is how you can feed your bees some sugar water going into the winter time and they're starting to come after me now so it is actually empty so I'm going to grab that here in a minute and we'll fill it up but I'm fixing to get stung so I'm going to walk back over here and mind my own business <laughs> I've got I've got a couple of, oh, golly I've got a couple of other things to actually show you guys. Just had one laying on my neck and tried to sting me and it didn't, but they're still after me. Let me get my bee suit on and I'll come back here in just a second. Like I said, they are super mad from yesterday. Come on, bee, leave me alone. I don't want my eyes stung. Let's see if we can make it. <laughs> So today's video is brought to you by one of my favorite brands whose product I have been using a lot lately after long days here on the farm. So if you guys are like me and you're tired of dealing with constant pain every day, whether you wake up in the morning with stiff joints, uh, body aches, muscle pains, I turn to CBD. CBD is something that thousands of people every day 
are turning to to further make their healthy lifestyle changes the natural way and uh, to kick these harsh chemicals out the door you know over-the-counter medications prescription drugs that stuff's not any good for your body so uh my friends over at Flora CBD have all these great products that I would love for you guys to check out. I have been using this topical cream here lately. This stuff is wonderful for your joints and muscle aches. And recently they just sent me some samples of this uh, CBD dip. They have like five different flavors already. All natural, no nicotine, no tobacco. I did try some. I do not chew tobacco, but I did try some of this. And the sensation is wonderful. It's long cut. It's smooth. Uh, it's, it's a really cool product. If you're trying to get rid of chewing tobacco, I would encourage you guys to check this out. They have all kinds of different oils and other products on their website, gotflora.com. I will put a link down in the description below. If you guys are interested, you can use my coupon code HIDDEN15 for 15% off. And uh, just go check them out and uh, give their products a try. All right, so I actually forgot that my bee suit was in the house, but that's okay because I needed to go in and uh, cook up some simple syrup and what this is it is a uh, one to one ratio of just granulated sugar to water and uh, you kind of get it up to a boil and turn it off and I'm gonna let it cool down it's actually pretty hot Ugh. I'm gonna set it in the fridge for just a minute and then uh, we'll go out here and uh, see if I can't grab the one that's on there that's empty and uh, not get eaten up by these bees because the man like like I said, since I worked them yesterday, they are super mad. I can't even hardly come outside without them chasing me. So uh, I'm gonna stick this in the fridge. We'll walk out here and see if we can't grab the other feeder off of there. And uh, hopefully we don't get stung. All right, so the last bee video I did was uh, when I was doing a little review over the Dewalt pole saw. And I was just saying a little bit earlier in this video I went back out there that night and I grabbed that nuke box, closed it up, and I brought it over here to our bee apiary. And I actually ordered these little five frame nukes. And these are just little wooden nukes. They hold five frames of the uh, bee frames. And what this is gonna allow me to do is to try to give these bees a better chance to make it through winter. I know I say this over and over, but these late fall or late summer into fall swarms do not stand a very good chance on making it. So I actually ordered some top feeders for these little nukes. And what you do is you fill them up with this sugar water like I'm fixing to put in this jar for uh, the other hives. And that allows them to have a lot more food and energy and they turn that into comb. That way they can start storing like pollen and some nectar. And uh, if the queen wants to start laying eggs, she can start laying some eggs to try to get their numbers up going in the winter time and like I said it is super windy so uh, bear with me I hope it's not affecting this mic too much but I have some uh, other exciting news so something I found on uh, Amazon was this thing right here that is a uh, swarm trap So I actually just put that out the day after the last swarm, oh, right here. And uh, I got it in the mail the day after this one swarmed. And I put it up immediately and the next day I had bees in it. So there's bees in it right now. I'm not gonna mess with them today. I'm gonna let them be for a couple days. And I have one more of these little nuke boxes and we'll talk about that. Let's go try to grab this uh, feeder without getting stung. I just got shorts and Crocs on, so that's not very smart. But that green hive right there, that is actually a star foam hive. And we'll talk about that too. Let me get in the shop. All right, All right see if we can make it without getting stung. So you can kind of see down in there, there's a couple bees. Okay, we made it in the shop and I got so much to talk about. I know I'm rambling all over, but here is one of those five frame nukes that I got here. You can see it's vented and it just holds five of the frames in there. And that'll allow them to overwinter in here and have so much less space than a regular sized hive like this. 
So that is the idea behind that. And uh, you can actually make it to where the drones can't come out, the queen can't come out. You can make it where it's just totally vented. Nobody can come out or you can just leave it wide open so they can come and go. And that's what we'll leave it on. And the bees that are in the swarm trap right now up in the tree, I will uh, probably tomorrow or the next day, I'll put some frames in here and I'll start moving them over. And uh, I'm gonna have to make uh, the strong hives mad because I'm gonna have to steal another couple of frames of comb and some honey or food. So these guys will have a chance going in the winter. Now, before I get to talking about anything else, I have got to brag on some of our subscribers. Uh, we have been getting packages after packages in the mail, and a lot of it don't have names on it. Um, you know who you are if you sent some of this stuff, and uh, I know some of you don't want to be mentioned. So thank you so much from my family to yours. Uh, this little kit right here has just about everything you can imagine for beekeeping in it. It's got a new smoker, it's got the hive tools, queen traps, brush, decappers, gloves, a frame tool. This little kit is an awesome beginner kit, so thank you so much. You know who you are. We appreciate that. They also sent some frames. Uh, another anonymous person sent a whole box, a whole deep box with frames. And then my buddy Andrew, he actually sent a uh, new smoker as well. And I gotta find where I put it. All right. All right, guys, so like I was saying, uh, my buddy Andrew hooked me up with a uh, whole new smoker. He's, he's seen in the video I was struggling with some with the smoker I had sometimes. And uh, he's like, hey, man, uh, you got something coming, so uh, I know you need it. And I was like, what is he talking about, I wonder? And sure enough, it was a brand new uh, bee smoker. So thank you so much, Andrew. This stuff, you guys do not know how much we appreciate this and how much this actually helps. This stuff actually adds up and costs so much and it's hard to keep enough equipment on hand to, you know, when you get a swarm unexpectedly, you got to run out and go buy, you know, one of these kits and stuff and that's a hundred and something dollars a piece usually. And uh, the reason I was at Lowe's just the other day is I went there to try to find some one by 12 cedar by eight foot long uh, boards because me and my dad was going to try to make some of these nuke boxes out of cedar and they were all sold out so I couldn't even do that. Uh, you pretty much got to have some plywood or some 1x12s to make these and I thought maybe if I could make a few more out of cedar you don't have to paint them or stain them you know cedar lasts a lot longer than just this pine stuff because I actually need to paint these but thank you guys so much for all this great stuff and there's some I'm not even showing there's more boxes over here on my shelf that you guys have sent and a lot of them didn't have names on them we just got them delivered from Amazon so thank you guys so much and for those of you that I do know who is that don't want your name mentioned, thank you. You continue to bless us, so thank you so much for all that. So, talking about the bee stuff. Let's talk about that little star foam hive I was talking about. So look at this. This is a uh, deep box. This is, I actually bought two of them, but it's only one, one kit. <clears throat> this is built by uh, Bee World Bees Box, and what this is is star foam. And it's super, super dense, super light. And it's supposed to be better for insulation in the summer and the winter time. So that little green box out there, that is what that is. I actually painted it with some leftover pistachio colored spray paint that we used on Rachel's little garden shed door. We had some left over, so I just painted it pistachio green. And I think the bees like it okay. I got one following me in here now. But uh, we're going to try it out and see how the bees like it. The only downside to it is it's super windy here all the time. And like I said, that's star foam and it's really light. So a new hive, I just put a new swarm in there. Um, it's actually one that I combined. I don't even, I'm, I've lost track on how many uh, swarms we've captured this year. I think five now. So I've combined uh, four hives into two. And then the one the other day when I did the Dewalt post all review, that's a new hive, and that is the one that is in this nuke box out there in our apiary. And uh, I showed you guys the bee trap, and I'm going to talk about that. I am not sponsored by them or anything else, but it is a guy on Amazon, just a single little, um, I don't know if he has a company or not, but it is the uh, Interceptor Honey Bee Swarm Trap, and I will put a link in the description to that product. I have not contacted him yet. But he wants feedback. He sent a nice letter with everything. Uh, he even sent a thank you note in the box that he sent from Amazon. He builds those uh, swarm traps 
and sells them from his Amazon store. <clears throat> so I'll try to do him a favor and uh, leave a description to that swarm trap down below if you guys are interested. His product is very good quality and it was very reasonable on price. The shipping was great. So uh, thank you Robert Fry is his name. And I'll try to put a link down there in the description and I'll send him an email and telling him that uh, maybe we can send some people to him if you're interested in the bee traps. So as soon as this uh, sugar water kind of cools down a little bit, I'll show you guys how this works. Let's get this camera up again. All right. So you got your uh, regular old mason jar here. And then you got this lid. And all this is is just a standard lid with these little bitty holes poked in it. And when you got sugar water, you guys know how syrup is. It's kind of, oh, it's like honey. It kind of just drips. It's not real. It don't just run out like water. So what happens is you turn this upside down and you put it in this little trough, I guess you could say. And what happens is this slides underneath the entrance of the hive and it just slowly slowly drips right down in here and the bees crawl in here and they actually eat the syrup up and they don't drown a lot of feeders you'll see um, there's some that take the place of frames and you just stick them inside the box and the bees will crawl in there a lot of times and a lot of times they'll actually drown so i'm not a big fan of those i do know some people like them um there's top feeders that you can put on top of your hive box and then you put your lid on top of that. I don't have any of those. This is the only type of feeders I have, but going into wintertime and early spring, if you ever get swarms or you get a new nuke box and you're starting your own colony, it's always wise to get some of these feeders and this really, really gives your bees a head start. And uh, like I say in almost all my bee videos, I'm by no means an expert. I'm still learning. We're just getting started. But every day that I come out here and mess with the bees, I learn more and more. So you don't, you can't learn if you don't try, right? So anyways, as soon as this cools off, uh, I got it stuck in the fridge. The one that I just cooked up, like I said, it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Um, a lot of people do one cup of sugar, one cup of water, whatever. I just measure this out and whatever it comes out to, that's how much sugar I put. And you don't want to just barely mix it up at room temperature, even though that your uh, sugar kind of melts down because what happens if, is if you don't cook it up to temperature and kind of stir it up and kind of get it boiling a little bit, they say that the uh, sugar water can crystallize inside the uh, honeybees after they eat it if it hasn't been properly melted. So uh, I don't know that to be true, but that's just some things that I've read. So if you do do that, be sure to kind of warm it up at least quite a bit to get that sugar melted into that water. And then you got your uh, simple syrup and your bees will thank you very much. It only takes a couple of days for them things to go through this. So as soon as this thing uh, cools off enough where I can go put it in there, we'll uh, continue the video over there. All right, guys, so we got the uh, sugar water cooled down good. Now we're going to put the lid on it with the little holes, with the little trough on, and uh, we're good to go. We're going to take it out there and uh, see if we can't get it put back in the entrance of that new hive where we combine the two swarms. And uh, hopefully don't get stung. And we'll talk a little bit more about this little bee trap. And take a look at the rest of the hives. All right, so there you go. We got the uh, bee feeder back in there, and uh, that'll just help them kind of boost up their food supply and a uh, little energy, and they can start building out this comb so they can actually start storing uh, natural food, pollen, and stuff like that. And uh, that will help them get through this winter way better. So, guys, here is a swarm trap. This thing is incredible. I'll probably do another video over this one alone. I just kind of wanted to show you guys. I left this ladder up because with all the bee activity here lately, we've been going back and forth with the ladders and all the equipment. So I just leave everything in the ranger and you can see the bees are coming and going. I don't know how many bees are in there. Like I said, this thing was up for a day and we already got bee activity in there. So that means that there's probably a queen in there. So I'm definitely going to hit up the uh, person that designs these and sells them on Amazon because 
I think it's a great invention and he's doing a, a good job by helping beekeepers come up with a uh, swarm trap to where they don't have to chase these bees all over the place like I have. Let me get back in the shop and we'll talk more about this. All right guys, so I'm back in the shop. I got the bee suit off and uh, it's so windy out there. I don't know if you guys can even hear me over the wind noise on the microphone or not. So anyways, um, a little update video on the bees. This has been a crazy year. Uh, we feel super blessed. You guys seen it started. We lost the two hives a couple of weeks ago due to the wax moths right after our honey harvest. And then all of a sudden we're blessed the very next day with a uh, swarm. More than likely it was from one of our beehives here on our farm. But uh, anyways, we were able to turn that into another hive and then we got another swarm after that. We got a call for a swarm from another family that lives down in uh, the town that we live in. And then the swarm or the bee colony that was in the tree at my mom and dad's house, I was able to finally trap it out and get it moved over here. And uh, almost every video people says, what about that bee? The beehive that was in the tree at your parents, have you got it yet? Yes, we finally got it. And uh, it wasn't a large beehive, but it was a couple of frames of bees and we were able to bring it home and we did that the newspaper uh, method where we were able to combine the two smaller hives to make one and then uh, I let them be a couple days like that and then once they ate through the newspaper what I did is I checked and seen that they were going back and forth from the bottom to the top so they were kind of intermingling I guess you can say that way they were used to each other by then so what I did is I took all the good frames out from the top one and I put it in the bottom and did away with that second box so now there's two bee swarms in that one deep box just just one layer not two that way going into the winter they only have to try to keep that one box warm and not both and they also um the less space they have to protect like the hive beetles and the moss if they do get in there that's just that much less space that they can uh, defend and do a good job at doing that so there you go we got the uh, swarm trap up the very next day uh got bees in it now i have not got it down yet like i said i'll probably wait a couple more days and then the star foam box that's something new that's another hive where we combine two hives so we're turning all these hives in to one strong hive pretty much what we're doing we actually got two and then the last one swarmed and that was a pretty decent size that got way up in the tree and i used that dewalt pole saw to cut it down you guys seen that and uh, i think that one's going to turn out good i'm really excited about these nuke boxes and these feeders that are designed to go on the top of them i think you can store about a gallon and a half of that simple syrup or that sugar water in there so that will be you know i won't have to go out every couple days and fill up their feeder that'll last a week or two weeks because there's only going to be five frames of bees in there so they're going to be kind of a smaller colony but they'll stand a way better chance of making it into winter and guys i uh can't let you guys know how much we appreciate all the support on these bees um people sending the frames and the boxes and the tools thank you so much i know there's so many people out there that want to help and want to do things and, you know, to conserve the bees and give back to the bees and, you know, supporting your local bee farmers or uh, beekeeper, I might say bee farmer, beekeepers or beekeepers on YouTube, just helping them out here and there, you know, just like you guys sent us stuff, buying their, buying their honey or buying their products, it helps out so much to give back to the bees because if it is not for the beekeepers, the bees stand a very poor chance in today's society in today's world with all the chemicals and everything out there and uh, it makes us feel feel really good uh, trying to learn these bees and trying to keep them healthy and trying to have a little apiary here on our farm where we can kind of plant wildflowers and plant crops and stuff for them that's that's things we want to do in the future I think next spring I'll, I'm gonna try to plant some buckwheat and stuff like that to really give them some forage so don't forget to support your local beekeepers because without bees uh, we're not going to have a lot of food left in the future and our kids and grandkids, you know, things can go bad. And uh, you guys know, I'm not going to give you the spill on that, but uh, I'm going to wrap up this video. Thank you guys so much for all the continued support and uh, all the comments about the bees. Uh, the bees on YouTube, I didn't think was going to do very good, but we we're actually getting a, a lot of attention and a lot of uh, views on the bees. But we can't give up on the goats and the pigs and everybody else, so... Uh, be stay tuned uh, for videos coming on that. And uh, thank you guys so much again. If you are not subscribed, please consider subscribing to our channel. It's free to do, free to watch our videos. 
Uh, leave a comment down below. Let us know, do you, are you a beekeeper? Do you support your local beekeepers? And if you do, how do you do it? Do you guys plant wildflowers around your property? Do you have a small garden, little flower bed, or whatever? We want to hear that stuff. So thank you guys so much for tuning in, and we'll see you next time.